Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today on this special edition of the Resistance Bureau. We'll be sitting down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with Zambian activist Joseph Kalimbwe. Joseph was a guest on our last episode, Young Africa versus Authoritarianism, but due to some technical difficulties, his participation was limited. That is why our team is so happy to link up with him today and provide the platform for his leadership. Joseph, instead of reading your bio biography that all of our listeners can see on our website, please, would you quickly tell us about yourself? What is your background? How did you initially get involved in activism and politics? And what projects are you particularly passionate about today? Uh, we'd love for you to tell our audience about that. Thank you very much, first of all, Jeff. My name is Joseph Kalimbe. I am from the United Party for National Development, which is the new governing party in Zambia. Uh, I joined the uh, UPND when I was 17 years old, uh, 12 years ago. And uh, over the past few years, it's been a painstaking long process of trying to ensure that I play a small part in ensuring that my party gets into government. We were in the opposition for 23 years. Um, and uh, with our party president, we had been coming from a series of uh, electoral defeats. We had uh, five electoral defeats and we had been trying over and over again. On an individual basis, I've been involved in uh, political uh, activism and in politics for quite a number of years. I was uh, the African Youth Union Simulation President and um, I had gone to invest and be able to learn the political understanding from there. So over the past few years, it's been quite a painstaking long process. And uh, during the time that I'm now in the UPND as Information and Publicity Secretary, been able to play a critical role in ensuring that we get into government, which we did last year. Excellent. Thank you so much. And you mentioned, you know, your specific role within opposition politics in Zambia, which is now the ruling party, as we all know. And of course, many of us are still, you know, standing in awe of, of the tremendous voter turnout that happened in Zambia in 2021, almost a year ago today, especially the youth. So as someone who is deeply involved there, in that particular campaign, what are the fundamentals, the specific fundamentals you believe that led to that game-changing youth participation we all witnessed? And just as importantly, one year later, how do you plan on sustaining or perhaps even elevating and boosting young people's participation in the country? Well, one of the fu fundamentals that uh, I think helped us to get into government was that we, we had come from a failed Zambian economy where the masters of our people, particularly the young people, could not graduate into a Zambia that offered them jobs. And so we went out to mobilize them around their struggles, uh, around the struggle of the economy, uh, around the struggle of the social and the political space that was becoming so and so toxic within the Zambian space. So we told them that if they give us a chance from the United Party for National Development, give us a chance to get into government who would change their lives. And part of changing their lives is that we could create Zambian jobs, that Zambia could be able to be stable and uh, we could strengthen the Zambian culture, could drop down the infl inflation rate. And we've been able to do that over the past um, few months, over the past 10 months that we've been in office for the first time in a long time, in a long time, we have seen uh, 30,000 uh, people being employed into the Zambian teaching public service. We have seen the Zambian culture strengthening against the US dollar and becoming one of the most strongest currencies in, in SADC. In terms of uh, uh, what we've been able to do, uh, it's been quite uh, a difficult time because we had inherited the, an, an, an empty coffer from uh, the former regime. But uh, we've been trying to ensure that we bring about that change. And uh, uh, over the past few months, we have seen that the Zambian inf inflation rate has dropped a single digit, something that couldn't happen over the past few years. And so it's been a long uh, process that we've been trying to ensure that we change the Zambian economics, we change the Zambian social political space. And uh, we are happy that we're on the right path in terms of ensuring that the masses of our people enjoy that which they voted for. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I, of course, follow you on on social media. You're, you're very active on there. And I would encourage our listeners to go and check you out on, on Twitter and elsewhere. And I've noticed you've been very outspoken on some other countries uh, in, in Southern Africa. Are there any particular elections coming up that, that you're paying attention to? I notice you've been talking a bit um, about Zimbabwe next year. But of course, we also have DR Congo coming up next year. And then in the east, we have Kenya coming up just next month. Um, Angola um, next year as well. So what are you watching uh, as a youth activist, one who has mobilized uh, the youth vote? And what, what should we be looking out for? What are you paying particularly close attention to? Well, one of the things that we are taught from in the UPND is that we shouldn't just concentrate on Zambian politics. We must be able to learn about the politics of other nations and be able to bring that into the Zambian space. Understand that which they are doing, learn from their failures and bring it home 
and be able to build on that. And so that is what we've been doing, learn from their successes and their failures too. So we've been learning about what is happening in Zimbabwe. We've been learning about what is happening in Kenya between uh, William Ruto and Raila Odinga. We've been learning about what is happening in the DRC as well. In Zimbabwe, and uh, there's a, the, the ruling party that I individually do not agree with in terms of their democratic space and the historical uh, background on treatment of uh, citizens. And, you know, there's been a series of violations of uh, human rights. And so sometimes I become critical about those things that, you know, people on social media come out and say, no, you shouldn't speak like that. But one of the reasons why Africa as a continent has been able to fail uh, its citizens is because we are we're unable to engage in tough diplomacy where the leadership speak honestly and frankly about the issues that we face. We, we are afraid to tell dictators exactly where we stand. And that is what I think my country must be able to do. We must lead this continent. We must lead this region and be able to tell dictators that we only extend a Zambian hand of friendship to those who respect basic human rights. And so that is what we do. And uh, we're hoping that other young people from across the continent can be able to learn from us and you know shift the, the narratives and change their political spaces in their own nations. Yeah, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. If you were to sort of put your your forecasting cap on, you know, we mentioned a few of the upcoming elections. If you were to pinpoint one election that's coming up in the region or on the continent, one that you've been tracking, which one do you think might shock the world? Obviously, Zambia shocked a lot of people. Many people didn't think the authoritarian regime of, of Edgar Lungu could be overtaken at the polls. So if you were to sort of point to one election that we should all be watching that might shock us all, which which one would you point to? Well, first of all, I want to say that the Kenyan election is uh, a lot of, it's, you know, the president is supporting the former prime minister and all that. So people expect that Raila, Raila Odinga could win the election. But the election in 2023 in Zimbabwe, that, that one is a, is a major election that Africa must follow because the ZANU-PF has been in power for quite a long period of time, 43 years. And so the opposition, the uh, Citizens Coalition for Change, they are putting in, they, 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 they are coming from the MDC and now they are putting in the, the name change and all that. I think they are going to play a very important role and change the direction of the region because for so many years, Sadiq region has been unable to speak honestly and uh, frankly about the issues that we face. And I do hope that uh, there's going to be free and fair elections, that every vote, every vote that is casted is going to be counted freely and fairly. And so it's an election that we must watch out uh, to. We must be able to follow closely because unlike in Kenya, unlike in uh, Angola, unlike in the DRC, that one is where we have a ruling party that has been in office for quite a longer period of time. And I, I hope that everyone else is going to follow what is going to happen there uh, in 2023. And you mentioned, too, you know, in, in your experience working in Zambia, you know, taking lessons from other countries, seeing what activists elsewhere are doing. And one element that we really like to focus on in, in all of our shows at the Resistance Bureau, and, and you and I have talked about this a bit, is the theme of solidarity, right? The notion that we're all in this together and that that national boundaries really have no relevance these days. So it's it's very clear to me and to others, I'm sure that follow you that this is a guiding principle in, in much of your work. So what is the, the personal basis for you for, for taking this approach? But also just as importantly, there are probably some young activists watching today. How can those young people in Africa and elsewhere across the globe how can they be empowered to, to follow your lead? And in the African context, how can they be empowered to reclaim these key symbols of solidarity that seem to have been lost in recent years, that seem to have, seem to have been co-opted? You know, the, the notion of pan-Africanism seems to have been co-opted by an older generation. How can young activists reclaim that um, in other notions of solidarity as a rallying cry for freedom and for human dignity moving forward? Well, I've always believed that solidarity is a message of the oppressed. We had been oppressed in Zambia for seven years under President Edgar Lungu. We lost some of our young members in the United Party for National Development. Those members are dead and will never be able to see them. The very same struggles that we faced in Zambia in defeating Edgar Lungu are the same struggles that our comrades and other political friends are facing across the continent. Whether those comrades are in Zimbabwe or they are in, in Mozambique, it's the same struggle. And so we must be able to build one another. This is a Zambia where, under the presidency of Kenneth Kaunda, we went out in the 1960s to fight, the 1970s, to fight for the liberation of Southwest Africa, present day Namibia now. We went to fight with the help of President Kenneth Kaunda that Southern Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe, was free from the Ian Smith rule. And so 
That kind of solidarity is what we must be able to put across because there's very same struggles that we are facing to remove Edgar Lungwa, the same struggles that every young people is facing, for instance, in Zimbabwe or in, in Uganda, where President Museveni has been in office for almost 37 years. So those things are shared, those struggles are shared where the basic human rights that Bobby Wine and the colleagues are fighting for are the very same basic human rights that we are fighting for here in Zambia. And so we must unite. As young people, we must be able to learn from one another. And don't just be in, in activism, join active politics, join a political party, get involved, seek leadership positions, because from that moment on, we can be able to transfer the leadership. We can be able to transfer the batons of leadership from one generation to the next. And that is what we are doing. We are learning from our president and we are hoping that we could be able to continue learning until the very end. That's actually a really great segue. And thank you for that answer to, to my next question. Obviously, you know, in this line of work, people like you and I who work on elections in Africa and elsewhere work on issues of democracy and, and democratic backsliding. It can be tough work, right? We can we can get uh, quite beleaguered and, and pessimistic given the, the obstacles we often face, especially in an era of democratic backsliding. So, you know, what what keeps you motivated and what keeps you optimistic. Um, obviously, again, you know, in this line of work, the victories are very few and far between. Obviously, we have the example of, of Zambia last year. Um, and having been involved in that personally was, was really gratifying working in, in Malawi and in, in the prior election there, in the Gambia, of course, in 2016, 2017. But those are few and far between. And, and oftentimes, we, we face more losses than we do victories in this line of work. So what really keeps you, you know, bright eyed and, and looking forward? How do you maintain that? Well, Jeff, one of the things that we fail to do in Africa in particular is that so many, so many times we concentrate on the victories instead of the failures. We don't, we don't look at the past mistakes that we've made. We, we don't look at what made us fail in, um, in the past. That is some of the mistakes that we made in my, in my party. We, we, we had been constantly going through failure after failure after failure. But then last year we realized that, no, colleagues, we've been failing over and over again. How can we improve? How can we learn from these failures? What lessons can we learn from our past failures? And one of the, the, the failures that we are facing is that even when we were saying that we had won, we we're winning with lower margins. So we needed to win with a bigger margin to ensure that the, the vote is not rigged. And that is what we did. We went out and mobilize the masses of our people around their struggles so that we can have a president, a Zambian president that does not look at the struggles of our people from the window of a private jet, but can be here inspiring the masses of our people around their struggles and giving them hope. So we went out and gave uh, the, the former ruling party a tough time because we had a huge, huge margin uh, vote gap. We, they would get um, 210 votes and you would get 38,000 votes. So it became very difficult. So those are the lessons that we learned. And I hope other people that are in the opposition, whether it is in Uganda, whether it is uh, the umbrella movement in Uganda, whether it is in, in Zimbabwe, if you want to win, ensure that in your strongholds you win with huge margins. Ensure that in their strongholds you lose with lower margins. That way you are going to defeat them when it comes to the issues of, of rigging. And I do hope that the African continent, whether it is here in Zambia or anywhere else, whether it is in, in Nigeria, whether it is down south in Mozambique, we can be able to draw examples and lanes that we can be able to strengthen our democratic spaces. I do believe we can do that going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And just a related question, you know, obviously the domestic factors in each country when you're talking about free and fair elections and, and mobilizing people, th those are paramount. But then you also have an international dimension. And one of the things we try to do is shine a spotlight on issues and concerns and elections oftentimes that don't necessarily get the attention that they otherwise merit. As a person on the ground in Zambia and having worked on elections elsewhere, does international media attention matter? And if so, why? You know, when, when I've talked to people, you know, such, you know, activists like yourself, oftentimes they'll feel emboldened because they know that the world is watching. You know, that they'll say that I, you know, I'll, I'll feel more emboldened to go out and vote and queue in line for 10, 11, 12 hours because I know my vote will matter because people are watching. The world is watching. Does that actually trickle down on the ground? Does that actually matter? 
Of course, inter- in the international media is very much important because it helps tell stories that cannot be told uh, beyond the nation. Zambia, we had when we were going uh, towards the election, we had the internet being cut out. So when the internet was being cut out, the international media, the international people outside the borders of Zambia could not be able to understand what was going on. And so it was important then that we could rely on international media to be able to retell the Zambian story abroad. Yeah. And so we had friends also that came on board that we were communicating with. But we also needed their voice to be more stronger because the issues that we were facing, the moment that somebody switches off the internet on the basis that they fear an electoral defeat, then they are jeopardizing the democracy that we must protect in the first place. And so the international media must play a very critical role in broadcasting the struggles of our people, in broadcasting the very same struggles that are happening in other nations uh, to the entire world. Excellent. Thank you. So I have a last question for you. Actually, two questions that are a bit related. Um, We always like to end on a positive note. So number one, what are your future plans and projects? What are you working on right now that's giving you energy that you'd like to tell people about? And related to that, what gives you hope and why should others be hopeful about not only Zambia's democratic trajectory, but about democracy in Africa writ large? Well, over the past uh, few months, we've been able to to work with a number of organizations that have been assisting us in terms of ensuring that we carry on the work that we've been doing. But apart from that, also we've been uh, ensuring that we communicate the message of our party, the United Party for National Development, um, to tell the people that we're facing, there's been a lot of propaganda that has been uh, peddled over the past few months. Some of it was that, you know, people have been saying we were setting up a U.S. military base in our country and, you know, some of that propaganda had spread across the region and, you know, people that did not understand that and who did not have any baselines of facts were accusing us of being puppets of the West. They are saying all sorts of things. But what we told them was that if you are friends with the East, with the Chinese, it doesn't mean that those Chinese must be our enemies. Therefore, if we are friends with the West, they are our friends. We don't deny that. If you got uh, an enmity with them, if you hate the West, that is not our problem. We are not going to inherit your enmity with the West. And so those are the issues that we are doing, that we continue to have ties with the West, whether they like it or not. Also, what gives me hope, what gives me hope the most is that young people of the African continent will be able to take on the batons of leadership. They will be able to continue uh, learning from the masses of our people, learning from the older generation. And that even a nation like mine, even people like myself who are in the ruling party, we must continue to ensure that we put our countries first before the parties that we belong to. If we do that, if we continue to do that, I do believe that we can make Africa a better continent, that this continent could move from A to B where B is a better place, politically, economically, and socially. That is what gives me hope the most whenever I wake up uh, in the morning. I think your point about putting country uh, over, over your party and principles over politics is definitely a lesson that um, many of us uh, around the world would would be well served to learn, including here in the United States. As you've been watching, we've been going through some of our own uh, issues here. So, so thank you so much for that. I think your message certainly resonates well beyond Zambia. So thank you so much for your time. Unfortunately, we, we've come to an end for today, but of course, uh, we will keep in touch with you. We'll follow your excellent work. And we'd like to keep you involved in the Resistance Bureau moving forward. Uh, We appreciate your time and all that you're doing on the ground to make our country a better place and to unite young African voices behind the causes of freedom and democracy. We definitely need more like you. So so thanks for spending some time with us today. No, no, thank you very much, Jeff. I hope that going forward, we continue to engage on these issues, particularly beyond our own nations, even in other continents. We can be able to learn from the successes of the USA uh, and bring it back home. How, how has it become the envy of the entire continent? How has it become the envy of the entire world? We could be able to learn small lessons from that and bring it back home and be able to develop our own nations. So thank you very much for having me. And going forward, I hope to get involved in more activities with the, the Resistance Bureau. Absolutely. And of course, thank you to our audience for for tuning in. We hope to keep seeing you here in the future as we have some excellent full-length Resistance Bureau shows in the works. As mentioned in the show today, there are some critical elections coming up in both Kenya and Angola just next month. So we'll hope to shine a spotlight on those two issues very soon. You can stay in touch with us in the meantime by visiting our website, theresistancebureau.com, and by subscribing on our homepage to receive our email newsletters that include show summaries, and participant videos. On our website, you can also revisit all of our past shows, which are free to download in the episode section. We're also on Twitter and Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Yes, we have all of your bases covered. So thank you again for joining us today. To Joseph, to our global audience for tuning in, we are truly grateful. Please stay safe in the meantime, keep fighting those good fights and we will see you out there. Thank you. 
Thank you very much.